been recording this video for two reasons. One, to teach new students, and the other goal in this group, the confidence interval, requires to understand sentences. And the numbers you had a hard time with that part of what they were doing. Also, students, this is your goal in asking for the last of the time that you must be going to put in this on, uh, on November, November 2nd. So you'll be doing this in the after, after, after the language. So here we go. So what you see in this distribution is the key element here. So this is where we go with it. And if you didn't see this last year's CCD students or our students who are going to watch this playlist, this is the case when you start it. It's important to look at how half an hour you look at the capacity job is coming in, but exactly as a sentence of the season. So watch it. If you didn't watch the season, you both watch it. It's very good time. And now, um, when we talk about uh, the distribution of sample means, and you can capture the sample mean and, uh, and, and a population mean that you give it. Uh, that's a quantitative variable. So when you have a quantitative variable, um, you can apply the central limit theorem. If yeah, it meets certain conditions, okay? And we'll talk about those in a minute. So basically, the central limit theorem couples it to that uh, when we go out and do repeated samples of the same size, that we find the find find sample mean of those, and then we graph so all those sample means and compare it to the population mean. Distribution is going to be normal with a mean that's changed the population mean and the same deviation is the population change deviation divided by the square root of n. And there's some caveats that uh, caveats in the answer as well. So we have that. Yeah, that's actually a state center stress. As long as we meet the condition, the distribution will be normal with a mean that's changed the population mean and this modified change deviation. So what are those conditions? Well, the conditions are right here. That's what you want to really want to focus on. Okay? If the original population is not normally distributed, you need to have a sample size of 30 or more to guarantee that the distribution of sample means will be normal. If the original population is normally distributed, then it doesn't matter what size you use. You need to size of 2 and the distribution of all those means of size 2 will be normal. Now, what, what does that mean as a statistic? So I went out and, and used this calculator applet, and it let me pick, it let me pick different states than populations. Right? And here you'll see a normal, right? It's bimodal, kind of bimodal. And this is right skewed. That's very right skewed. Is it the left skewed is a uniform? And I chose to do number three, which is, I don't know, I guess it's right skewed, but it's not like a nice right skewed. It's really wet. And uh, what I did is I, I had it sample. Yeah, this was the this was the let me get another another writer here. This is the sample that the that this parent this population I picked, and I had it pick sample size of size one and found the mean well of course that doesn't make any sense really. All this is is this parent population. And Notice the parent population has a mean of, so this is Q, you the right probably, it has a mean of 33.9 and a standard deviation of 34. Now, um, it might be a little bit different if I had done a high, just high population size, but the applet address pretty soon takes forever to calculate. So if I want the mean to be in the So my theoretical value is going to be a little bit different. So that's what the distribution looks like when I'm picking sample size one. Here I'm picking sample size of the five. So that parent population, this 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 distribution here, if I went out and did a sample of five, calculated the average mean and plotted it, it would be, I don't know, it would be here, right? So Mr. Mr. Nice and the only tech guy, he does this to me so I don't know if I need to go that far with that here. You watch the video. But Certainly, it doesn't look like the parent population. It's kind of starting to look normal, but it's not a perfect normal. This is one of the variations, and that's size 5, right? What happens when we get bigger sizes? So now I'm doing size 30. So going out, drawing 30 individuals from that population, calculating the mean, sample mean, plotting.
water and has given it many, 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 many times. Notice this is done with very normal distributed. Sample size is 30 or more. Starting with normal. Also notice that the mean is the same, but the same deviations are a lot smaller. So it's not known what's happening there. Well, the central limit theorem tells us the central limit theorem tells us, hey, if you have a big enough sample size, the same deviation for all those sample means can be found by taking the parent population for the deviation. I think that was 34.4. And we divide it by the square root of 30, so that's our sample size, right? I, I should have done this fast on the other, 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 I mean, the other, other two stuff, that's okay. This is going to give me 30.4 divided by 30, 30.4 divided by the square root of 30. I'm getting 5 point, well, 30 point, I'm getting 30 point, 30 point, 30 divided by the square root of 30. Uh, you know, 50 uh, 
child and see if more child looks more than fifty times point seven is what forty five and fifty times point three one minus point seven. I think that's just mean. Um, so both of those are bigger than five, so we would expect the same thing distribution that he has in this case is more than the two. And how do you get the mean? Well, the mean is one times t. So if we did that here, so the mean is 35. Okay, now we have the base set. And then the standard deviation is the square root of the n times n times n times t times t. So we've already done n times t, that's 35. Because we met that condition of both n times t and n times t being greater than 5, we have no distribution to find the mean by standard deviation and median. This one I just made, I just made an extremely large sample, not a simple file, even more smooth than up there. About well, one tenth of 350 is greater than 5 and so it's not even going to say. That's just so easy to use it. You can do the mean, you can use the mean standard deviation, you use the normal curve. So let's do a couple of examples. This came from the primary worksheet in the computer book. And here is the setup. I didn't do all the individual here. There's like find a probability that you know, find a probability that um, a single person has an IQ of 60 with the mean of 100 and some of the other system. Notice this is a quantitative variable, right? It's not a yes, no kind of answer, it's an actual number. You can calculate the mean, calculate the standard deviation, and it's good for it. So, the one I want to focus on, the problem, part of this question I want to focus on is part B, is where they tell us we've got a sample of 50 people. So, this is a sample distribution. Uh, so, because our sample size is bigger than 30, we know it doesn't matter. Well, we do know the parent camp population is. Has the same deviation of 50, and we know that the parent population is only distributed. So it doesn't really matter what sample size we use, but we do have a sample size of 50, so in either case, it's very really normal. So then, um, then, um, let's see where we are. Okay, so sample size is 60. Uh, so VCAT tells us the sample distribution is normal with a mean of 100 and the standard deviation. This is where we're going to use that the simple limit theorem of standard deviation that we mentioned that set of two So, remember this the standard deviation for all those sample means is the parent population standard deviation divided by the square root of 15 divided by the square root of 60 works out to be 1.94. And then I, you don't have to make sketch. I did this just because I wanted to relate it to earlier work. Um, I took the mean in the middle. I added the standard deviation. I added the standard deviation again. I added the standard deviation again. Notice those are the nice 68, 95, 99, and 7 year old numbers. They're asking what's the probability that a group of 60 people have an average IQ of 105. 105 is not one of those nice new numbers. They actually they can uh, greater than I, I can't see this, I can see this one the other. It's greater than so I'm looking for this area to the right. That's the probability of the right. So this is exactly what I'm trying to find. What's the probability that X bar will be greater than 105? So I've got a mean of 100. I've got a standard deviation of 1.94. I've got a, I've got a, I want to know my x value is greater than 105. So I go out to the David Lane applet. I see values in the area, the area from the value. I in my mean, I in my modified standard deviation, not the parent population standard deviation, the sample distribution. So give me that new one. And I want to know above 105, and that's what it gave me. So it's pretty small chance of that happening, right? A half of a percent chance, you want to talk about as a percentage. Okay? Now we're into, um, uh, let's 
categorical variable. So we've got 13 percent of people are left handed. Let's see, you either left handed or you're not. I mean, it gets to the end of that score, but you can be right now to classify as left handed or right handed. And then you invite 100 people to the center workshop, and you have 20 pairs of left handed scissors. Am I going to have enough? So I said I expect more than more than 20 people, left handed people to show up. And so I don't know. The first thing I want to do is make sure I can have a really demanding risk of is it a binomial distribution? I can see that. Yes or no. 13% uh, of people are left handed, so the probability stays the same. And whether I'm left handed or you're left handed doesn't, doesn't affect the outcome. And there's a fixed number of trials of 100 people. That's a binomial distribution, definitely. So now the other thing I should check on is n times t is 100 times 0.13 greater than 5. Oh yeah, 13 is a matter of fact. And then is 100 times 187, 1 minus 0.13. Is that greater than 5? Oh, oh yeah. So I don't know why I'm talking about that. So this work, the sampling distribution will be normal. Good. This for a mean, and this for a standard deviation, and what we're doing is we're going to get a square root of n times t times t, right? n times t. So that was an earlier encounter, chapter 5. So here's the standard deviation, here's the mean. I again made it a normal curve set, put the mean in the middle, and then I added the standard deviation three times. And I see that the 6895 math and numbers are uh, IDs, and 20 is between them, not one of those 19 numbers. So I'm going to go and use a normal curve and figure out what's the probability I'm going to have more than 20 people in, in the room with these left hand scissors. So, oh, shit. I went out to. I went out to the big lane applet. I selected. Area from the value, I typed in the 13, I typed in the 2.36 and put up all 20. Does that mean I want to get more than 20 people in? Then I see that probability. That's a pretty small probability. So that means getting more than 20 people out of 100 with the left handed people is a pretty small chance, right? So I'm probably okay with having 20 pairs of left handed people. It's just not going to be unusual. I use, I, it's going to be an unusual result if I get more than 20 people. Okay, that's how you answer that question. And it's a glimmer of where we're going to go in chapter 8. Let's do the calculus.